Thank you for watching Times News and you are with me, Chawis Banda. But first, the headlines. Sadiq CSOs appeal for the unconditional cancellation of dates which their countries or international institutions. The Malai Police Service launches a manhunt for killers of a person with albinism at Kachere Township in Blantyre. And Human Rights Defenders Coalition calls for the revision of newly gazetted toll get fees. We have these and other stories. Please do stay with us. Now, the news in detail. Civil society organizations from Southern African Development Community, SADC member states, have appealed to international financial institutions and countries for unconditional cancellation of dates haunting their countries. The organizations made the call on Friday in Lilongwe through a communique which they released at the end of their SADC People's Summit, which was held in Malawi from August 17 to 19, 2021. Matthews Kassanda with the details. The organizations say most of the states are incapacitated to repay the dates. Southern African People's Solidarity Network Programs Manager Johnny Maketo says some of the dates are inherited from first post-colonial leaders and are abandoning the current generation. Maketo further says in the current trend, the countries are never going to be free from the dates because they are borrowing from one institution to repay to another institution. And soon after independence, most of our countries, they had a lot of economic problems and they went to borrow. In fact, they did not even borrow. They were offered loans by World Bank, by IMF, and many other uh, uh, international financial institutions. They were giving them this. And even former colonial nations, we still have got a legacy debt coming from our former colonial masters. Southern African People's Solidarity Network Coordinating Committee member Dalito Kubalasa says there's a need to move from finger pointing and start working together to find solutions to the challenges that the region is facing. So a social contract demands, you know, people within these partnerships to, you know, holding accountable everybody because nobody is above uh, the law. But as I said, we would rather focus on how best as the people of Sadiq how best can we get our leaders to be listening more to their people? This year's Sadiq People's Summit was held in long way under the theme Elevate Justice and Equality. Meanwhile, Vice President Salos Chirima says government is grateful to all stakeholders that took part in preparations for the Southern African Development Community Sadiq Summit. Chirima visited some of the stakeholders in Lilong on Friday to convey government's appreciation for making the summit a success. He visited Kamuzu International Airport, Bingo International Convention Center, Capitol Hotel, Golden Peacock Hotel and Lilongwe Civic Center. Now we had put a lot of pressure on people uh, to make sure that uh, we, we deliver uh, a summit uh, that is, uh, uh, is, is good and probably memorable. Now the, the summit is gone, uh, we needed to come and give feedback to the people that played a major role. The airport is point of entry and departure, the city council are the custodians of goods and services here, and therefore I thought I could come out here and in person tell them that we appreciate what they have done. During the visit, the vice president was in the company of cabinet ministers that included Michael Usi who is Minister Responsible for Tourism and Culture, and Halima Daudi, the Deputy Minister of Local Government. Lilongwe City Mayor Juliana Kaduya was there and she had this to say. For the continuity of whatever we have been doing during the, this Saturday, we will continue with whatever we were doing and the people will see more change. We will not stop here and we, 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 people maybe might think that we did this because of only Saturday. But we will still continue with the, whatever we'll be getting, like the revenue. Because the Leon City will be looking good now. People will be able to pay the revenue. So we'll be using the revenue to maintain the standards of what we did during the SADIC. Malawi hosted the 41st SADIC Summit from August 9 to 18. And President Lazarus Chakwera assumed the leadership of the regional bloc. The Malawi Police Service says it has launched a manhunt 
for killers of a person with albinism at Kachere Township in Blantyre. Public Relations Officer James Kadazera says the deceased is believed to have been murdered by unknown people at Kachere between 8 and 13 August 2021. Thomas Kachere has more in this report. In a statement, James Kadazera assured the general public that they are trying their best to corner the suspects. Ian Muhamba, 20, from Makina village in Mulanje, is believed to have been killed at Kajere Township and was found in a decomposing state with some organs removed. Kajere Township is under the jurisdiction of Limbe Police. Patrick Musa is Limbe Police Public Relations Officer. We found the body indeed in a decomposed state. Since we were, we were with uh, uh, some medical personnel and uh, some chiefs, uh, the, the, the burial was ordered there. When the body was examined, uh, it was revealed that uh, he died uh, due to uh, manual strangulation. So, uh, as police, we uh, would like to assure members of the public that uh, we are investigating. We have instituted an investigation uh, which we think, at the end, uh, will be fruitful. Some of his body parts were found in Maone Forest in a sack. This comes despite the country's fight against abduction and killings of persons with albinism, which remains a public challenge. In other news, some Malawi Housing Corporation MHC tenants have been handed a day's notice to vacate their houses at Ngombe in Blantyre following a court order after the corporation allegedly bailed houses on private land. Notifying the tenants, lawyer representing the purported owners of the land, Kuleza Pokoso, told the tenants they were required to leave the houses by 9 a.m. tomorrow. In Gumbe, uh, between Chitseko Estate, Kuseri Convenge Estate Limited, the owners of the land, and Malawi Housing Corporation. Uh, that issue is still in court. And while it was still in court, Malawi Housing went ahead and started constructing the houses that are here. And uh, now they went ahead to start uh, renting out the houses that they constructed illegally because our clients maintain that this is their land. Uh, when we saw that Malawi Housing are going ahead to rent out the houses, to subdivide the plots here, uh, possibly to sell some of the plots and to do construction work, we went to the High Court uh, and to apply for an injunction to stop those activities. And the court has ordered that uh, those activities should stop. Uh, the subdivision of the, uh, the plots, uh, the construction of roads, and the tampering with the terrain uh, of the land of the, the owners here, but also bringing people here, my housing, bringing people here, the court has stopped that. Renting out the houses, the, store, the court has also stopped that. So we came here to serve the people who have been occupying this land on instruction of my housing with the court order as part of the enforcement of that court order. And officials from the Malawi Housing Corporation are yet to comment on the matter. Human Rights Defenders Coalition, HRDC, has asked government to revise the newly gazetted toll gate fees, saying they are too high for the majority of Malawians. HRDC has made the call in a statement issued on Friday. Audrey Kabalamula has the details. Government on Thursday gazetted new toll gate fees for the gates at Chingeni in Balaka and Kalinyeke in Deza. The list of the toll fees shows 1,700 as minimum and 20,000 waja as a maximum fee depending on the type of vehicle and number of passengers. According to HRDC Chairperson Trapens, the fees are exorbitant considering that the road users already pay huge taxes. Trapens also says the introduction of such fees will drive up transportation costs such that passengers will be the ones shouldering the costs. He describes the fees as daylight robbery as the country's roads are in bad shape. The coalition says government must revise the fees through consultations with key stakeholders, including the road users. Roads Fund Administration spokesperson Masao Kongwaluko yesterday said the tariffs we are considered by the Minister of Finance, Transport, Roads Fund Administration, among others. Minibus Owners Association of Malawi Secretary General Cox Lake Amange is also protesting the tariffs. 
Minister of Health Kumbize Kandwado Chiponda says misinformation is, frust is frustrating government's efforts in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Chiponda said this on Thursday during a virtual workshop on COVID-19 misinformation and disinformation policy research in Lilongwe. Rebecca Chimjeka has more in this report, read by Audrey Kapalamola. Chibonda challenged the researchers and government to find ways of stopping COVID-19 misinformation, which is usually on social media. People, they're creating stories and which has really you know, affected our efforts in the fight against COVID-19, but it's also uh, undermining our efforts, especially in the uptake of the vaccines. We still have some other Malawians uh, who really believe that uh, the vaccines are not good for them. And unfortunately, lives are being lost on a daily basis uh, because of I these issues uh, of misinformation and disinformation, because these are very, very serious issues. Minister of Information Gospel Kazanko said his ministry will ensure that messages on COVID-19 are in line with the United Nations pillars. We are having to hear from those that have been there and have done research so that as we now move forward, we should be able to see what interventions that we can put uh, across to make sure that uh, misinformation is not uh, flourishing, misinformation is not uh, uh, getting uh, and gaining uh, bigger ground. Professor Sosten Chiwota conducted the research on COVID-19 misinformation and disinformation and Paul Bennis and Professor Reiko Heko from the University of Leicester in the United Kingdom were principal investigators. You're watching the Evening Bulletin here on Times Television. We'll be back with more soon after this break. Mona Malawa Nzanga. Nkondo yo gonje tsa COVID-19 ndia wina aliense. Tiriri mozi. Ine ndina sanka kulandila katemira o COVID-19 atangu yamba kupelikido. Chifuga monga na mwino. Moyo wanga. Umoyo wa udwa la mene ndima wa samalira. Abale anga. Ndide la langa. Ndi zintuzomwe ndima zika pantima panga kwa mbili. Katemira o COVID-19 andi tete zaine. Ndi ena umwana landila katemira ayu. Kujuo piezo joti tingadwa ale mwaka ya kaya. Ugone kedwa nchipatala. Kapena kutaya moyo watu chifuwaja COVID-19. Kulandi la katemirayu, kutitandiza kutana ndi mulili wa COVID-19 limozi. Ziwani zambili za katemirayu, ni kupanga chisanko jani zeru. Sanka ni katemira, jatiza ni tsogolo. When it comes to food, we all have our preferences. Say Sima, for example. Some like it soft. Some like it hard. And others, well, they like it medium. But whatever your preference, the flour that you use matters. Imagine a flour that has been a quality product for generations, ready-made, conveniently available, full of vitamins and minerals, better than any other, trusted by families for decades. It's sunshine cream of maize and snow white of Oyera, just how you like it. The board, management and staff of National Oil Company Malawi Limited, NOKMA, wishes to congratulate His Excellency the President, Dr. Lazarus McCarthy Chakwera, on assuming the chairmanship of SADC, wishing him success during his tenure. back to the news continuing with the news teachers under the private schools employees union of malawi have lashed out at their employers for failing to remit pension funds to respective pension bodies general secretary for the union falison lemani says the government must inspect the schools to ensure that employers are adhering to pension laws this was disclosed at the union's fourth congress 
in Lilongwe on Friday. We have a report by Audrey Kapalamola. Lemani says many private schools have not put their employers on the pension scheme while others are pension defaulters. He says this will have an adverse impact on their welfare once they retire from their jobs. When they check with the pension manager, they see that there's nothing that they have. As a result, uh, they have challenges. They, they, they are tortured mentally uh, because they have retired. They were supposed to have some savings, but they have nothing. So it's like uh, people are not happy to work with the private schools as, as teachers because of that challenge. However, President of Independent Schools Association of Malawi, Isama Waikrif Chimwendo, says only a handful of the private schools may be culprits, but majority of them are adhering to the pension law. Labor Commissioner for the Minister of Labor, Shalewayo Nyankulu, says the ministry will act on the matter accordingly. As you may recall, there was, there was a, an attempt to name and shame. The idea is to ensure that the, all employers uh, comply. Among others, the teachers have demanded sustainable jobs and fair pay despite the impact of COVID-19. They have also alleged discrimination from government on logistical arrangements such as refreshments and allowances when it engages them in public activities. Education authorities in Mzimba district have complained that lack of sanitary facilities in schools is exacerbating girls' dropout from schools due to hygiene problems. Mzimba Eutin is on primary education advisor Joseph Mbwele said a lot of schools in the district have inadequate toilets, a situation he said needs serious attention. Josephine Chipofia has fired this report read by Sam Kalimira. Speaking when an government organization, Look Foundation, donated toilets and urinals at Gangukwe Fu Primary School in the area, Mwere said 10% of the enrolled girl learners drop out of school, especially in senior class section. We mobilize the community to construct the toilets. No, so these toilets are not necessarily permanent. Usually during rainy season, they collapse. Now at the end, we may have one toilet or two toilets surviving. So it's really a problem. Uh, sanitation is affecting, is, is, is posing a serious challenge to education. You know, especially girls, they don't come to school, especially when they feel that they, when they go to school, there is no toilet. Meanwhile, Luke Foundation Community Development Deputy Manager Tina Toledzama said there is need to renovate and construct toilets and urinals in schools to improve sanitation and the health of the learners. As Luke International working with the different schools in Simba North, Simba South and in Karabi. So through that, we were able to identify some of the schools uh, through our programs that we have because we have got scholarship program, we've got a uh, health and then we've also youth empowerment. So through this we were able to identify some of these schools. We thought there was that need for us as an organization to do something about it. And then it was when we saw that there is need and then we gathered with the community to see how we can help these schools. Because all in all, we want the girls and the boys to attain higher education, but not only that, to achieve their goals, to achieve their dreams. But if they don't have the, the good toilets at school, there is no way they can achieve these things. Elizabeth Nirenda, a Sunday 8 learner at the school, said before the construction of the toilets, they were using bushes to answer the call of nature. She said this compromised their privacy, leading to others dropping out of school. Look Foundation, through its program of improving health, has constructed two blocks of toilets with two rooms at Kangukwe Primary School in Mzimba North and Kabirintende in Nkhatabe District worth 10 million kwacha with funding from Biogas Foundation. In international news, American President Joe Biden remains defiant amid a political storm triggered by the swift Taliban takeover of Afghanistan and the chaotic end of America's longest war. Whether he can survive the crisis depends on many factors, including the safe evacuation of Americans. The VOA's White House correspondent, Patsy, has more in this report. Chaos continues outside Kabul's airport Thursday as thousands try to flee the country after the Taliban takeover last week parents passing their children to American soldiers as they try to climb over. President Joe Biden remains defiant, 
The withdrawal could not have been carried out more effectively, he said, in an exclusive interview with ABC News' George Stephanopoulos. We go back in hindsight and look, but the idea that somehow there's a way to have gotten out without chaos ensuing, I don't know how that happens. Biden said no one could have foreseen the swift Taliban takeover, a possibility he has repeatedly dismissed since announcing the drawdown in April. The, uh, somehow the 300,000 troops we had trained and equipped was going to just collapse. They were going to give up. I don't think anybody anticipated that. Still, the failure to evacuate Americans and Afghan partners in an orderly manner and the rapid collapse of the American-backed Afghan military have raised doubts about the calculations behind Biden's foreign policy. Yes, it was a failure of leadership. It was mostly a failure of uh, proper thought and planning. In just a few days, Biden's approval rating dropped by seven percentage points to its lowest level in his presidency, according to a Reuters Ipsos poll. American public support for ending the war has also tumbled. 49% of voters now back the exit, down 20 points since April, according to a Morning Consult political poll. U.S. lawmakers vow to investigate the rapid Taliban victory and chaotic withdrawal. What we have seen is an unmitigated disaster, a stain on the reputation of the United States of America. But some analysts say the damage can be repaired and the decision to exit is still the right one. This effort in nation building wasn't working. It's time to end it despite the short term hit to American credibility. In the immediate term, the successful evacuation of Americans and handling of Afghan refugees will be key to Biden surviving the crisis politically. The next phase is ensuring that Afghanistan does not become a terrorist breeding ground and uphold some basic measure of human rights, including how they treat women and minorities. The United States and other members of the international community have to, to agree on a set of messages, clear messages for the Taliban, about what their new government uh, should do in practice. On Sunday, the U.S. froze nearly $9.5 billion in Afghan government reserves held in American bank accounts. These assets will become important leverage in negotiations with the Taliban. Patsy Widakuswara, VOA News. Well, that's all we had for now. But before we go, a recap of the headlines. Sadiq CSOs appeal for the unconditional cancellation of dates which their countries owe. The Malawi Police Service launches a manhunt for killers of a person with albinism at Kachere Township in Blantyre. And Human Rights Defenders Coalition calls for the revision of the newly gazetted target fees. Remember, you can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website www.times.mw, liking our Facebook page Times360 Malawi, and following us on Twitter at Times360 Malawi. Remember to wash your hands regularly, observe social and physical distance, and mask up. Please, do stay safe. You have been with me, Jawes Banda. Goodbye. It is with grief and sadness that the moon